Okay, so here we're on part two, and we're starting to combine reflections with stretching and shrinking. So what's the big idea? Well, I think the biggest thing to hold on to is how these dilations work, and also that reflections and dilations kind of happen in alternating orders, and that won't impact the transformation. So you have some flexibility. Vertical dilations of this form transform a function f by a scale factor of c vertically. And horizontal dilations of this form transform a function f by this scale factor. So if it's multiplying x by c, it's not a scale factor of c for us horizontal, it's a scale factor of 1 over c. And we're going to play with that idea. And number 10, looking at the square root function, first we're going to plug in the inputs 0, 1, 4, and 9. And we're just going to take the square roots of those inputs. So the square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. So there is our function. And that's f. Great. Now we want to look at g of x. And if you look at g of x, it does two things. It has a horizontal dilation by a scale factor of 1 half. And we talked about that. We're doubling the inputs. So we'll have to go half as far. And then it's a reflection over the outputs. So it's over the x-axis. And then we're done. So let's do that. First, I'm going to say to myself, well, my inputs only need to be half as large. So instead of 1 to get a height of 1, 0 is at 0. But to get to 1, I only need to plug in 1 half. To get to 4, I don't need to plug in. To get to 2, excuse me, I don't need to plug in 4 anymore. I only need to plug in 2. So that will get me to this height up here. And to get to a height of 9 up here, I don't need to, to height of 3 up here, excuse me, I don't need to plug in 9. I need to plug in 4 and a half. And it will give me that height right there. So those are that's the horizontal um, dilation. And then I reflect them over the x-axis. It's a reflection of the output, so it goes over the x-axis. 0 stays at 0, and instead of going 1 half 1, it's going to be 1 half negative 1. And instead of going to 2, 2, it's going to go to 2, negative 2. And then finally, it's going to go to 4 and a half, negative 3. And we have this here. So our function is kind of scrunched. And that's our function g. Okay. So we have f and g. As you can see, that shape is changing, even though it's badly drawn by me. Erase my marks here. OK. And if you look at the instructions, it says a plot at the opposite outputs of f of 0, 1, 4, 9. So the opposite heights of 1, f of 1 is at 1, f of uh, 0 is at 0, same opposite height of 0, 0. The 0 and 1, the opposite height of f of 4, so it's, that's the opposite of 2, and the opposite height of f of 9, which is the opposite of 3. And those are opposite heights. Instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, you have 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So that's all we're saying there. We want to use the same outputs. OK, now what? Well, let's see. Come on, undo. There we go. Now we want to plot two more functions. We've got h of x equals f of negative 2x. So again, we're dilating by a scale factor of 1 half, but then we've got to reflect the inputs. So we're reflecting the inputs over the y-axis. So that's going to go 0, 0 still staying there. But instead of 1 half 1, we're going to go to negative 1 half 1. I'm going to start labeling these points, negative 1 half 1. And then instead of going, so we're going to go to 4, 2, and then we dilate by a scale factor of a half, so it's 2, 2, but then we reflect it over the y-axis to get negative 2, 2. And we could have reflected first and then dilated with the same thing, negative 2, 2, and then finally negative 4 and a half, 3. And that's it. So this is, I'm going to change colors though, blue. And then something like this. That's our function h. And now what does j do? Well, what j does it's, the, it's still a reflection over the y-axis, but the scale factor is 1 over a half. So the scale factor is 2. It's going to double the distance. That's because we're now having the inputs. So we have to go twice as far on the x-axis, then half it, then take the square root. right? And so instead of 0, 1, 4, and 9, we double those. And let's use a different color. Let's be crazy here. Let's go green. We get 0. Instead of 1 to get to a high of 2, we need 
two to get you a height of two. Instead of, instead of, instead of, let me say it again, that's terrible. Instead of one getting to a height of one, we need to double that to two and then reflect it over the y-axis here. So it's going to be, fix that, um, negative two, one. That's one of our points. And then I'll keep, I'll, I'll draw it out and I'll label them all. And then instead of going to four and getting up to two in our original function there, we have to go to eight to get to a height of two and then reflect it so it's negative eight, two here. And then instead of going from nine to three here, we have to double that 18 to three and then reflect it. So negative 18 and three here. So negative 18 is right there. And this is our function for j. Again, sorry about the drawing, not the best, but negative 18, 3, negative 8, 3, and 2, no, negative 8, 2, and negative 2, 1. So again, we want to pay attention to the scale factors and the fact that with reflecting and dilating, you can interchange those and not encounter any issues. All right, I hope that helped.